So we're gonna go in here and show you how to copy files in or out of projects. If you have a project on a thumb drive, what you're gonna be looking for is a TP3. It's a Topcom project file extension. But under data, you're gonna go up to project and then you're gonna tap the one at the top to open up your project files list. From here, if you have it on a thumb drive, you would hit copy and then you hit from D to internal. What that's gonna do is it's gonna look on the thumb drive for any TP3 extension file and it's gonna show up and then to internal memory is gonna put that specific file in the specific folder that Pocket 3 is looking for. By doing that, you're gonna hit select it and then hit okay. And then once that happens, it's gonna copy into your projects list now and for you to select. By hitting okay, it's gonna make that your current project and now you can see everything in there. To copy projects out, it's the exact same process, just in reverse order. You're gonna go back to data, you're gonna hit project, bring up your project list. Except this time when you go to copy, you're gonna to go to from internal to D. Where that comes important is we tell customers as soon as you finish localizing a job site and it is green and everything checks out, what you wanna do is store that backup somewhere. That being said, if something happens to your data collector, if you need to purchase a rental or someone else gets a data collector is working on that job site, you have that file localized. He doesn't have to do that localization process over again. On a 400 acre job site, that becomes very tedious and could take almost up to three hours. Storing this as a backup is also a good thing because if your data collector, if something happens to that file and it's corrupted, losing that file can just cause more frustration because someone out there has to go do something he did that he only needed to do once, but he's gonna end up doing it again. Also for copying projects or copying files in and out, if you have an updated surface, say your engineer says, I need that pond to be dropped a foot. Well, if he builds that 3D surface for you and gives you that update, what you need to do is go tell your project, hey, something's been updated, you need to load that project. What you would do is hit data, go into surface and go to import export. And depending on which file extension he sent it to you, most likely a surface file, which will be a TN3 file, You'd select that, and then from a 5000, you'll get your Windows Explorer. Go figure out where that file is. If you downloaded it from email, it might be in your downloads folder. But once you select it, hit open. It's gonna copy that surface in there, so then now when you go to surfaces and select that, you have an extra one in there, probably you know a revision of what date it was done. So that way when you go and check grades, you're doing it from the updated file, not an old file. And then the other one would be your line work file. More often than not, sometimes there's an engineer that builds in there an extra building pad or for whatever reason, an extra lot. If you need an updated line work file, you go back to data and line work, and this time you go to import export and do from LN3 file. Or if you had an AutoCAD file, you can bring it in from that and you would use the DXF file. But from here, you would click from LN3, source file name, hit the three dots, go once again, more than likely to your downloads folder, or if you have it in your thumb drive, go to your D drive, select the file and hit okay and then hit OK on this screen here. One thing to avoid is I would not check add all lines to a specific layer, because what's gonna happen is most CAD engineers specifically layer these things different colors and different names, that way the operator out there knows what he's looking at. If you add everything to a specific layer, then all your back of curb, your flow line, your gutter, building pads, contour lines, all go in the same layer and same color. Uh, it can cause issues, because once you go to turn specific layers on and off, well, if they're all in one layer, it's gonna be harder to manage that.